Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Corey, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going over three separate things. The first one being where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar for today, or Madame Nazar's location. The next thing that we're actually going to go over is all the different collection sets and their current cycles. And then last but not least, we're going to go over all of the daily challenges in extensive detail so that you guys can earn as much gold as possible here in Red Dead Online. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and show you guys right where you can find Madame Nazar for today. So let's go ahead and pull up our map here and head a little bit west from where we're currently at. And you'll find Madame Nazar along the Dakota River, just south of Valentine, making Valentine your fast travel destination of choice for today. But if this is the only thing that you guys came here for today, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to leave a like on the video as it really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you guys want me to continue making these videos. It tells me that you like and enjoy these videos. And honestly, if it helped you guys out, it could potentially help out other people because YouTube will promote it to more people the more likes that we get on this video. And honestly, don't forget to subscribe down below. It literally just takes a couple seconds to like and subscribe all right let's go ahead and move on to the next thing and that's going to be talking about the daily uh collection sets and their current cycles not the challenges but the cycle sets now just keep in mind that these do change every single day at 8 p.m eastern standard time so if you guys are watching this video after that time then you guys will have to wait a little bit longer until madame nazar moves and the daily challenges change for the day and i will update you guys as soon as i possibly can However, I like to go after the coins and the lost jewelry just because you do make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time as possible, making $540 per hour collecting these five collection sets. Now, they will take about three to three and a half hours to actually complete them, but it is definitely worth your time. Now, if you guys do collect all the different collection sets, you guys will make over $4,000 per day. So it's completely up to you how much money you really want to make each and every single day here on Red Dead Online. But coins and the Lost Jewel require the Field Shovel and also the Metal Detector. Coins will be a part of cycle number two for today. And then the uh, Lost Jewelry will be a part of cycle number three. Now the next two sets I'm about to go over also to require either the Field Shovel or the Metal Detector. And we have the Arrowheads at cycle number six and the Family Heirlooms at cycle number one. The next four sets I'm about to actually go over don't even require you guys to actually be a collector at all. However, you're just not going to be able to sell any of your collection sets unless you actually buy that collector bag. So uh, just keep in mind that you can only carry 10 sets at a time. Um, and after that, it's completely a waste of your time to even try. Um, so you, hopefully you guys will purchase the collector bag before you even get a total of these 10 sets. But we got four sets in total. We got American Wildflowers at cycle number four. Tarot cards at cycle number six, the antique alcohol bottles at cycle number six, and the bird eggs at cycle number two. All right, so let's go and move on to the daily challenges. But before we actually do that, I want to talk a little bit about live streaming and a couple other things. I do live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on the channel. If you guys would like to join in in all of the activities and play a lot of different and a variety of games here on the channel, then make sure that you guys are checking out my website and my live streams every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The website is GamerCorey.com. So you guys can actually know the times I'm going to be going live on those days. It's broken down... Uh, couple different ways so you guys can hopefully figure out in your time zone when you guys need to join in on the fun now i do also have memberships here on the channel if you guys would like to further support me as a content creator i also do have a couple of private servers that you guys can join in depending on what your current rank and tier of that membership might be and you guys can get trial periods to some of the to a, a server if you guys are any rank but just keep in mind that that account will be um not able to participate unless you're a specific rank all the time so definitely keep that in mind so let's go ahead and move on to the daily challenges and go over these in detail we're going to go over quickly go over the list first so we've got uh one crafted a horse care item one finish a showdown in shootout series five herbs eaten we have three player kills from cover in showdowns we have three player kills with throwing weapons in showdowns Three sockeye salmon caught. One visited a shop in Strawberry. A distance of 4827. Traveled on a moonshine wagon while on a mission. Two moonshine of preferred type sold to a buyer. 
two moonshine story missions completed, 20 donations to crypts, two goods sold to a distant buyer, six perfect carcasses donated to crypts, we have three American wildflowers found, three antique alcohol bottles found, five bird eggs found, we have one bounty hunt completed with five minutes or more left, three bounty targets hogtied with a reinforced lasso, and then last but not least, we have one player bounty collected. Now, you guys can earn 11 gold bars each and every single day from completing the daily challenges, and even more if you guys participate in any of the showdown um, PvP related, so free roam showdown, um, the horse racing has, uh, will count for this, any of the stranger missions, and any bounty hunting mission are also opportunities of making more than 11 gold bars each and every single day. Lots of gold opportunities, honestly. There's two requirements. Number one, you need to have a challenge streak of completing at least 21 days in a row of completing at least one daily challenge. It's really easy to just complete one challenge. We already went over the list. There's always one or more that you guys can complete, honestly, in a shorter amount of time than it takes to log into Red Dead Online. And then you guys can go ahead and log off and continue your streak and not have to worry about it. Now, the other requirement is to be at least a rank 10 in each of the roles and be uh, have all the roles purchased and be at rank 10. So make sure that you guys have all four of the ranks or roles purchased and be ranked 10 as quickly as you possibly can. I give you a lot more gold opportunities, especially the bounty hunter, because that's the only role currently that does allow us to earn additional gold. So let's go ahead and break these down in detail. So crafted a horse care item. Now you're typically going to need a fire for this. There's only one that doesn't require fire, but all you have to do is go and sit down by your crafting uh, when you sit by a fire, it can be at your camp or any of the fires around the world. There's You can do some of these at gang hideouts. There's bootlegger missions. There's random spots. And then there's a couple in different towns. There's one in Blackwater. There's one south of Tumbleweed. There's two in Saint Denis, a couple in Rhodes, uh, and one in Valentine and a couple other locations. We have to finish a show, shootout in a showdown series or shootout series. So... That's pretty easy to actually do. It doesn't take very, very long to actually complete that. It's about eight to 10 minutes of your time. Plus you'll get paid for completing it as well. So you get the point up to that 0.5 gold and 0.16 gold bars for completing that showdown in a shootout series. We got five herbs eaten. You can already have them picked or you can pick whatever five ones that you want. There's a lot around where I'm currently at, which is just a little bit west of San Denis. So if we take a look at what is around here, watch, there isn't really gonna be anything. Um, I guess I didn't even look to see where we were exactly at on the map here. I mean, I know I'm right next to uh, um, Caliga Hall, but there should be some right over in this area over there. And there's also going to be a couple more towards that abandoned building. And then along the coast, there's like Oleander Sage and things like that. But it doesn't really matter which ones you guys go after. Just eat them and you're going to be fine. So like these uh, evergreen huckleberries will work just fine and you can go ahead and eat them. And that's how you're going to get this completed. All right, perfect. All right, let's go to move on to the next one. And that is two that are more showdown related. So you're going to have to get three player kills while in cover in a showdown. So hopefully you can do that with while you're in a shootout series. And then the same thing with three player kills by using a throwing weapon in showdown as well. So these might be a little bit more tricky, specifically the throwing weapons. Now, the easiest way to get the throwing weapons done is if you guys can get name your weapon as an option to play in or participate in, just because you guys always have access to a tomahawk and you're not having to use your own weapons and then buy them if you accidentally lose them. So a, a tomahawk or a hatchet is already always given to you each and time, each and every time that you do respawn. So hopefully you guys can get three kills in the time that that takes. And you can actually do the same thing while uncovering this in the same one. Three sock ice uh, salmon caught. I'm going to give you guys probably three different locations, actually four that you guys can do this at. Number one is actually going to be up here at Wind Yard Strait, which is by Granite Pass up here. Uh, this is a pretty good location. Another really good location is actually right around Valentine and really close to where Madame Nazar is at today. But around this bend of the Dakota River, you guys can find a lot of different salmon locations. Another one, Lake Owangila, right in this location right here. And I said I was actually going to give you guys four and... Oh, uh, oh, Craze Run is another spot that you guys can go ahead and go to. Those are probably the most common ones, to be honest, where I typically go is either the Lake Owangila or the Dakota River 
area just because you don't have to worry about with other large fish fish in this area with lake ongila you're gonna have to worry about musky so you have a chance of catching those as well so i just go to the dakota river to be honest and it's really close to mad Mazar and not that far away from valentine uh, visited a shop in Strawberry. This might be the reason that you might want to go to Lake Owenjila today, just because you have to visit Strawberry anyway. And you can go to the Butcher or the General Store. That's pretty much the only two that are really there anyway. But if you just ride past the Butcher and get really close to it, you actually don't ever have to actually get off the horse at all, which is pretty fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and move on to... The daily roll challenges for today. We got a distance of 42, 48, 27 distance by on the Moonshine Wagon while on a mission. This is going to be equivalent to two deliveries of Moonshine, which kind of goes along with the sell to Moonshine, a preferred type to a buyer. So if you have the time to produce two different types of Moonshine today, which is going to take about a half an hour at the week Moonshine and longer if you do anything stronger. But it can be done. Just make sure that you add the flavoring later so you can guarantee that you're going to get a preferred type sold to a specific buyer. So you're going to sell to everybody but Bert. Bert's going to get no love today. And then we got two Moonshine story missions completed. So these two definitely go to, together, but the Moonshine story missions, I don't plan on doing them just because they do take a little bit of time and you don't really make anything from them, to be honest. We got 20 donations to Crips. And then I think, yeah, and then we have six perfect carcasses. So the six perfect carcasses donated will count towards that 20. So if you guys are interested in donating perfect carcasses so you got small and medium use a varmint rifle large use a bolt action rifle and only hunt three star now there are times when you can actually deliver and donate a two star and it will count towards a perfect carcass but if you want to make sure that you're guaranteed to always get that perfect carcass only shoot after the three star animals 20 donations you can do the six perfect like i was mentioning before or you can do like all feathers which is what i plan on doing and then that way it's just done and over with right away. I have plenty of feathers. I do a lot of bird hunting because I'm always going after like ducks and geese. So I get duck feathers, geese feathers, and then I'm also getting flight feathers, which add up very, very quickly. And then we got two goods sold to a distant buyer. I'm going to completely ignore this one today as well, just because it takes 10 to 15 minutes to do a distant delivery. And you have to do two of those. Or just, I saw, I'm sorry, to sell two goods to a distant delivery. So... It's a little not effective in my time, with my time anyway. Plus, there's a lot of other negative uh, effects that can come from it. You have to worry about other people potentially griefing your delivery, and you never want to lose out on some of your hard-earned money that you've made by doing a little bit of hunting through the trader role. The next ones are going to be all different types of collection sets, so I'm just going to quickly go over these again. we got American Wildflowers at cycle number four. American Wildflowers is going to have the most amount of opportunity, and it's going to be the easiest to do because you can find wildflowers a lot of different places. But there's three total sets that you can get every single day if you collect all of the American Wildflowers. We have the Antique Alcohol Bottles, which is going to be a part of cycle number six. And then the Bird Eggs are going to be a part of cycle number two. Now, the nice thing about actually collecting these is you don't actually have to be a collector, but if you're not a collector, you're not going to see any of these as a daily challenge anyway. Uh, the last and final roll is going to be the Bounty Hunter roll, which is the only roll that does pay out additionally in gold, which is fantastic. We got one Bounty Hunt completed with five minutes or more left. So basically do a Bounty Hunt as fast as you possibly can. We have three Bounty Targets hogtied with the Reinforced Lasso. If you're a Bounty Hunter, you have to have the Reinforced Lasso. It's definitely worth it. It's a, one of the best investments you're going to make, especially when it comes to the Bounty Hunter roll. Um, so just... Buy that as soon as you can. I believe it's like 250 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it might be. It's I bought it day one, so it's been out for almost a year. So I can't remember what the exact price is. And then last but not least, we got uh, one player bounty collected. And there's, if you want to do it legitimately, uh, <clears throat> good luck. Uh, it's probably not going to happen. I haven't had this happen in months. It's probably been like six months of it since I've actually had a player bounty legitimately offered to me. But if you guys want the easiest way of getting a player bounty do this with your friend not in the same posse basically have your friend shoot you and then you keep pressing charges over and over and over and over and over until they get a high enough bounty and then they're going to get a bounty hunt on them and then you can actually collect that you can kill them and deliver them or whatever and that's how you're going to get that one and then you just basically take turns it's going to take a little bit of time because it's not going to be just instant from you pressing all the bounty charges on them 
but it can be done. But like I said, the easiest way to do this is with a friend. But that is all the daily challenges done, gone over, and covered. If you guys do have any questions regarding any of the daily challenges, by all means, leave a comment down below because I'd like to be able to help you out if I possibly can. But if you guys did find the video helpful or enjoyable in any way, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys stay gaming.